平和上人人都话佢十恶不赦，我绝不退缩。爹，尽你为冤。你唔归顺嘅话，我就要你死喺呢度。今晚我就要同佢你个了断。Hi everyone, it's Sid from Cool Movie Gram, your source for everything about cool films. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and、um, also like, check out my other videos and、uh, let me know what you think. And also follow my Instagram, of course. Um, yeah, today we're going to be reviewing Sakura, which is、uh, a 2023 film, which is made starring Donnie Yen, who also directed this with、uh, Kam Gaiwa, I think, who's the also who's the co-director, but it's produced by Wang Jing. And this Blu-ray was released by、um, Signature Entertainment. Film itself starts off where a young boy is left,、uh, a, a newborn baby is just left at the home of a poor、um, working class couple.、Uh, the boy grows up、uh, to become a Chao Fin, and、um, this boy is trained at the Shaolin Temple, played by Donnie Yen, of course, and he eventually really rises to prominence in the.、Um, In the beggar clan, but then he is actually framed for murder and、um, and for conspiring to rule the actual beggar clan, which he's wrongfully accused for. And he goes on a mission to、um, to save,、uh, to clear his name, and also uncover a much more sinister plot which is ensuing. The film itself is pretty much、um, well. What can I say?、Um, the storyline it was quite interesting. I mean, it is based on、uh, Jin Yong's、um, novel Semi God, Demigods and Semi Devils. I mean, his work has been pretty much very influential on Wuja. It's based on like a so Wuja, not Wuja, meaning it's like a swordplay fantasy. So you do get a lot more of the.、Um, Exuberant,、um, you know, highly fantasized type of fighting. I mean, a far cry from what we're used to seeing Donnie Yen do, especially in most of his more recent films like Ip Man or even The Amazing、uh, Raging Fire.、Uh, this is a lot more kind of like set in like a fantasy world, kind of like、um, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon.、Um, but of course,、uh, there's been many. Adaptations of this actual novel itself, which is Demi Gods and Semi Devils, because there's so many characters. But Donnie Yen himself, as the、um, as as the as the star and even the director himself, who actually kind of like took a lot of control of、uh, of, of、um, this production, he had actually wanted to focus it more on the Chao Fen character, and he kind of based it on his story and not his own experiences. Because bearing in mind, if he wanted to actually make the movie. Uh, based on the actual novel itself, would probably take more than just one movie, and more than just、um, it would be longer than just a, an hour and、um, just over two hours and such. I mean, the film itself is about 135 minutes long. And、um, what can I say now? I mean, the plot itself sometimes it just feels like there was a lot of potential for this to be like one of the greats when it comes to like.、Um, Like the kind of the genre itself, which is you know mystical martial arts Wuja novel,、um, because I mean I think for some reason it just seems like the storyline just seems to kind of go off and while I mean in parts of the film, especially during the start of the movie, it just kind of felt like this is a bit kind of 
feels a bit cheapish, you know, it just doesn't seem as lavish as it could have been. I mean, in comparison to a film like Crash and Tiger Hidden Dragon, which had an amazing production value, and he kind of showed on the screen as well. And um, whereas watching this, it just kind of at the start of the movie kind of felt a bit kind of cheaply thrown together. But um, I mean, the cheap, the bad CGI just doesn't help. I mean, sometimes it, it kind of works. The, the, the special effects do work, but sometimes it just doesn't. I mean, it's, it was nice to see like um, people like uh, Yun Wu Ping, even Malvin Wong and Kyle Hoy, uh, Kyle Hoy, uh, you know, all these great like kind of veterans who actually kind of like have their little cameos and appearances. And, um, you know, I mean, the cast in itself is great. I mean, the storyline is kind of, it's a bit jumbled. It could have been done a lot better, I would say, like in terms of if it was a bit more kind of focus on the actual screenplay. If, if the script was done a bit more kind of like, you know, just just took its time and maybe just kind of like have a bit more of a build up. It just seemed like, for example, the story of Chao Feng was kind of just rushed at the start, like especially like his childhood, because I know they're trying to get to like a more adult uh, Chao Feng in his 30s played by a uh, touching 60 Donnie Yen who pulls off the job pretty well. I mean, he looks pretty good for his age. I mean, he doesn't look like someone who's uh, 10 years younger than Jackie, than Jackie Chan, of course. And um, yeah, but you know, apart from that, but you know, although there's quite a few things that it just kind of puts you off the film, but as the film went on, it actually, it gets better. For some reason, it just kind of like starts kind of like tell that there was a lot more quality control as the production went along. I mean, it was just the starting of the movie was kind of a bit, you know, muddled, but then it just kind of gets going and uh, you kind of get to see how like the character himself, who's um, joined by a, um, a, a woman who's actually looking for her parents, her family, but then um, you know, as you can see, that there's a kind of a bond of trust built between them. But, you know, the story itself aside, it's kind of like a bit, you know, it is a bit mismatchish. But in terms of the action, I mean, Donnie Yen and his team, including uh, Kenji Katana, Katanagi, who's the um, who's the fight choreographer also on um, Donnie Yen's uh, previous movie, Raging Fire, who did an absolute great job. Um, you know, the fight scenes in this movie are absolutely spectacular. Like, it's just kind of like this is Donnie Yen in his element. I mean, especially like, um, you know, the opening fight sequence where, the, his, where you see his entry as the adult Chao Feng at the actual, uh, at the tea house. That was a great fight. Um, you know, the fight at the actual hall when he actually um, faces like his previous uh, clans members. Um, that was pretty, uh, that was pretty cool. Even, like throughout the film itself, it is peppered with a lot of great action. But because the movie is just meant to be this grandeur, huge kind of, um, huge production, uh, but it just kind of like, just seems to miss the mark. But, you know, it is an enjoyable watch. I mean, I did kind of find myself, you know, at one point I was registered, willing to just sign off and just kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> add this to uh, maybe just go and get this movie exchanged. I thought, you know, this isn't really that great. But um, yeah, I would say it kind of, um, it got better. And uh, it seems to be that the, um, you know, the cinematography was, was really good. And, you know, the music score is a bit, eh, you know, it just kind of seems quite something that you'd expect from like a early 2000s TV show from Hong Kong. I mean, that's the kind of vibe I got from the, from the actual music score, but it could have been better. Uh, at parts, but um, you know, it is the action that kind of keeps the film kind of going. I mean, there are instances of a bit of CGI thrown in, but I mean, for the most part, the bad CGI just doesn't really affect the actual the fight choreography, which looks absolutely amazing. I mean, it's, you know, great use of like weapons and like different kind of like styles of fighting that are kind of put on display in this movie look really good. And um, you know, kudos to Donnie. I mean, he still looks know like a badass and even at his age at the moment he's getting eight or getting older but he's managed to kick ass and um even as a director i would say this i mean compared to his previously directed efforts which 
I mean, they don't really seem to get a lot of love, but um, for me, I would say for me, the best film that he's directed and severely underrated is Ballistic Kiss, which was, I believe, 97, 98 that he directed. That was actually his third film as a director. And um, that was actually a really kind of good, dark kind of story. It was a small, small scale movie, which was about an assassin. Um, he goes to kind of like uh, on like a kind of like a mission for revenge and it's a lot of like kind of like John Woo-esque kind of like action with a Wong Kar Wai mood and um, just some badassery kind of like Donnie Yen fighting. Um, that for me it would always be Donnie Yen's like best directorial e effort so far and I hope, hope Ballistic Kiss gets a, um, a Blu-ray release from um, maybe one of the boutique labels um so overall i would say for my my rating for sakura is a three out of five not amazing not terrible but enjoyable it's, it's an okay movie based on the genre itself and the type of film it is i would say this is a decent movie now the blu-ray Hmm. It's kind of like, okay, the picture quality, um, it's, it's a brand new film, it's a 2023 movie, and I would say it's, you know, it looks great. Uh, the fact that it's in, um, it's in the original Cantonese language, I, mean, I was surprised, I was expecting a, uh, a Mandarin language movie, because bearing in mind it's uh, kind of these Wuxia films, which tend to have a lot of uh, mainland involvement, tend to be in Mandarin, but the fact that this was kind of released in its uh, Hong Kong um, the Hong Kong native language, which is Cantonese for the movie, and um, the fact that you hear Donnie Yen's own voice in the film too, which was, um, which was pretty good, and um, you know, it's nice to see that. And yeah, so you know, the, you know it sounds great. The fact that you've got um, the sound of like a, it's it's a it's a five point one. The sound quality is great. Um, and uh, yeah, and also, I mean, the bonus feature wise. It's only just a making of, which was a small kind of section. And it just kind of showed, oh yeah, how Donnie Yen's like really kind of like passionate about this project. It's just about how him kind of like kind of showing how great he is, but and what this movie means to him and, and, and everything. But I feel that um, it could have been more, but it just felt like kind of like a, just a quick kind of promo making of. It wasn't even exactly kind of like full extensive making of that you're used to getting like on, like, like we used to on DVDs and such. But um, yeah, so, you know, it's just, you know, the film is presented nicely. I mean, so the Blu-ray, I would say, lack of special features, um, you know, there's just only one bonus feature, which is the, um, the making of, I mean, it's not a bare bones release. So I would say, yeah, I'd give it a, uh, a three and a half. You know, there's the presentation of the film is really good too. And um, yeah, I would say, yeah, I mean, depends. I mean, I would say if, you, if you're a Donnie Yen fan, I would say definitely you do buy this film. I mean, you, you will find that there's something to enjoy in this film. And even, for example, if you're a fan of like Hong Kong movies in general, especially of like the Golden Era movies, you get to kind of see like a lot of veterans and, um, you know, veterans of like Hong Kong cinema itself kind of like maybe popping up here and there. And um, yeah, just just to appreciate it for the uh, the fight choreography. But uh, yeah, so overall, I would say yeah, it's it's it's, it's an okay movie with a decent presentation. And um, yeah, I would say give it a go, but just don't expect anything spectacular. I mean, I know he's been <laughs> kind of done. He's kind of been on a roll since like the uh, Ip Man movies. He's kind of done. Well, he's done, let's not talk about the Ice Man movies. I mean, they were kind of a bit. Nah. You know, but uh, they were they were they, they were misfires. But um, in terms of like raging fire, he had like uh, the Ip Man one, two, three, four. You know, he had films like Splashpoint and whatnot as well. And um, yeah, it's like even Kung Fu Jungle was okay to to an extent. And Bodyguards and stuff. You know, he's he's, been, he's actually been making quite a few good movies, including uh, Wu Jia, which was uh, released as Dragon in the uh, in the West. Uh, which is the Peter Chan movie. That was a great movie too. But um, yeah, um, hopefully, uh, I know he's making a, another um, kind of like a 
modern day crime thriller called uh, Misjudgments, which I mean, picture, pictures of that have actually been released on the um, on the internet and all over social media. So I'm kind of looking forward to that one, and um, I think it's going to be it's going to be worth watching. But yeah, I mean, Sakura, not bad, not bad. You know, it's okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, this is the artwork. Yeah, so it's only like a kind of like, almost like a, a a standard edition release. I mean, you know, the artwork is you know, just plastering Donnie's face. I mean, in most cases, it's something that um, I would easily just buy. You know, without normally without thinking. But um, yeah, it's okay. You know, it's it's an okay movie. Nothing amazing or spectacular, but. Um, Definitely, and it's, it's, it's entertaining, entertaining to say the least. Right, well, uh, that was my review of um, Donnie and Sakura. But um, be sure to, to uh, subscribe and let me know, um, you know, if you've seen this film, let me know your thoughts. I mean, what did you think of this movie? I mean, what, how would you kind of like put this to in comparison to other um Donnie Yen films and uh, just the Wuja genre, genre in, in, in particular.